Well, the, the preferred scaling size stick for the video invention was to create the video in a 320 by 240 or a quarter of the full screen of your television or computer window, which today still remains the preferred size for video creation. And so now instead of creating full screen worth of data, you're only creating a quarter screen worth of data for transmission. And when the quarter screen video is transmitted and then scaled back or blown up, as you might think of it, to full screen on the user end, astonishingly, Dick, it actually performs better than true full screen video and looks better than if the user were actually watching all that data being transmitted to them. And the reason for this is that the compressors and that create the video and the decompressors that decompress it on the user's end use 75% less data to, to work with and therefore can, prefer, can, can work much better and not choke up. And when you flood the compressors and decompressors with too much um, um, data, it's like flooding your car with too much gas. It, it chokes and it sputters and it dies out. And so full screen data is also very hard to deal with. This solved for all of that. And, you know, um, therefore, when you play it back on your end at a quarter screen, or you watch television now, which you do at a quarter screen, it actually looks better when you watch it full screen played back on your machines. So that video invention, Dick, hinges on an optical trick. And that optical trick enables quarter screen video to be viewed at full screen. And while the user perceives full screen video, it's truly only a fraction of the screen of data that they're viewing, which is why, which is now really the way that television programs are now created and transmitted, as well as video over the internet and now even video over cell phones. Uh, at the time, uh, that invention, when we invented it, we called it brain scaling. And that's because it uses the human brain as the compressor. And a side note, Dick, when I was eight years old until I was about 16, I was a magician for house parties, and I likened this invention to a magic trick. And you, you can see that it's a magic trick that allowed an elephant to be sucked through a straw. But really, it was only an ant being sucked through the straw that's then made to look like an elephant. So, but either way, it works, and it changed everything. This was a game changer. This changed the whole world as we know it, Dick, and definitely changed everything digital video from that point forward. And it opened up new markets, and, you know, it allowed for existing bandwidth to have 75% more. It, it truly was revolutionary and truly changed the world. And, therefore, that is why it's such an important piece of history for everyone to really know how the Internet was turned into this fantastic multimedia experience you now take for granted today. And soon, with this video conferencing systems perfecting and the computers not crashing as much as the old days uh, when you tried to run video conferencing, um, you, you can see where that's taking us. And Dick, Dick a study was, was even conducted at the Milwaukee School of Engineering where they uh, tested user preference of the scale, the smaller video watched full screen versus actual full screen video. And remarkably, users preferred watching the scaled video from low to high bandwidth over full screen. And therefore, the video technology is not only applied to the web, but they translate it to every form of content creation and distribution. For example, from televisions to DVDs to HD DVDs and every piece of hardware and software in the digital video chain. And, you know, the savings, Dick, you know, I've got to say it again, it was 
It was a massive increase over prior bandwidth savings. It was 75% savings, which uh, it opened the door to unthinkable markets in both low and high-end video applications. And, you know, again, from HD, DVD, which wasn't even thought of at the time, to cell phone video, which cannot exist without the technologies, and to, again, video teleconference like Uvu here. And, Dick, at the time, if a company at that time invented a technology that saved you 1% in bandwidth, the company had a whopper of a technology uh, instantly was funded in the millions in the dot-com day, and 75% was unheard of. It, was, it, it, it hadn't even been achieved at the beginning of television. And, and let me take another side note here, Dick, because at the beginning of television, there wasn't enough bandwidth either to do television. And RCA had a big problem on their hand that when they tried to transmit television, it it stuttered after a few minutes, and the video and audio went out of sync because there wasn't enough bandwidth to transmit them both simultaneously. And they were basically going to give up on television other than for three-minute commercials because of that jitter. And what really happened was they called in a, um, a, a psychologist, and uh, what he came up with was what became known as interlacing where they split each individual frame, and there's 29 frames to make up a single second of video, and they split them apart so that it was like that. And then they transmitted the two separate frames, and then in the back of your TV there was a photon gun, and they rastered the two frames back together, and that happened 29 times per second on, the, on your TV, since the dawn of TV, and that's how they solved the bandwidth problem back then. Well, my idea threw that all out the window. You just had to take that quarter screen video and then blow it up, and you didn't even need any of that additional um, bandwidth. In fact, if once the cable companies learned, of course, under strict non-disclosure agreements at the time, of the scaling process, all television video began to be transmitted and encoded this quarter screenway through the existing cable pipes and increased the number of their channels overnight by 75%. And that opened the door for 75% more channels and things like On Demand, um, TiVo, all of those applications. So you can bet, you're, you can bet, Dick, that I'm going, that they owe me as much as Microsoft and as much as Apple and all the others, but the cable companies on 75% of their streamed content right now owe me a pretty handsome royalty for expanding the bandwidth at an unprecedented, unheard of level that really changed television as you and I know it. So having discovered the holy grails and having had these phantasmagorical dreams, basically, that end up transforming the world, we first sought to file patents, and that seemed like the appropriate business logic. So we filed for patent applications, trademark applications, copyrights, trade secrets for the inventions, as well as we had use the application for video conferencing, so we took applications for video conferencing and for remote control operation of the cameras, so whereby I could operate your camera if it were on a mount from a remote location. So we were thinking putting them up in sports amphitheaters and whatnot and letting users log in through the Internet and operate the cameras and pay a little premium, be able to zoom down, you know, and those kind of other applications also for the Thought Journal. Same thing, put it up in the rainforest, let them see it, let them move it, let them be a part and interact with it. 